I'm Phil from Woodsmith, and I want to talk about pocket hole joinery. At its basic, we're connecting one piece of wood to another. But there are a couple of questions. How exactly do you use it, and what specifically can you do with pocket hole joinery? So in this series, what I want to talk about are some practical applications for pocket holes. Now, along the way, we're going to be demonstrating those on two projects primarily. This side table, which uses a variety of pocket hole applications in order to complete just about everything that you see here. We're also gonna be building this mirror frame as well. Along the way, you'll pick up some tips and tricks on how to use your pocket hole jigs to get the strongest, best looking joints. And we'll even tackle some other applications like building plywood cases and face frames that go with them. So I hope you stick around and learn something about how to use your pocket hole jig more effectively. The first of the project joints that we want to look at is one of the simplest. It's called the flat joint. And it's used, as it sounds like, to join two pieces of wood or more into a flat assembly. Here I have the pieces that I want for that hall table that we're working on. So this is going to be the top of the project. I've drawn a triangle here to show how I want the boards arranged. So I want to have a nice tight joint here. In order to do that, I'm going to flip this one upside down. And I'm going to use a pencil to mark out the location of the joint. So I'll have one in the center and then space out the remaining ones six to eight inches apart. When you're working with a pocket hole jig, you don't need to be super precise or make really fine lines. What I'm doing here is just to have the lines for you to be able to see clearly. Now it's time to bring in the pocket hole jig. For these, I'm going to use the 720 series. And what I like about it is it has these fold out wings that will support the long board as I'm working. Then I can take my workpiece set it in place on the jig and line up those layout lines that I marked with the clamping block and the drilling block on the inside of the jig. With the workpiece secured in the jig, I can start drilling holes. It didn't take long to drill the five holes here to make our joint. So I can move the pocket hole jig out of the way. And there we go. Now I'm just going to flip the other piece around. And then for the peace of mind, I'm going to run a bead of glue on the joint line. I'll bring the two pieces together, and now I'm just going to start driving screws, working from the center out to the edges. There you have it. In just a few minutes, we've gone from individual boards into a single glued up tabletop. With the flat joint, you can quickly and easily create tabletops of any size. The next part of our table that we're going to work on is the main structure, the base of the table. So what I have here is the long back apron. I have a front apron that has two openings for drawers. And then the two short side aprons, that will, and all of these are going to connect to the leg. And that particular joint is a 90 degree joint that we're going to show here. And for this, I'm going to show you how to do that with the 520 jig. Now with long pieces like the apron, there's no need to stand it upright and having it wobble around. What you can do is just hold the piece in place like this and we're ready to start drilling holes. The thing here is that I want a really strong joint between the aprons and the legs on the table. So I'm going to add a few more screws. 
For this one, I'm gonna have three screws on each end of the pieces. When it comes to the short aprons, you can put those in the jig just like you would when you normally think about using a pocket hole jig and have the workpiece vertical. Made a little variation on our 90 degree joint here in that I have the surfaces offset. So the legs are a little proud of the aprons, both on the front and back and on the sides. The way to do that is when you go to drive the screws, is I used a pair of spacers that I set in place and the thickness of the spacer is gonna determine what the offset on that joint is. Pretty easy to do and as you can see, our table base is looking great. The next step on our table project are to add a series of spacers to the upper portion of the table and then down below. And these are creating pockets for the two drawers that we're gonna be getting into a little bit later. And to install these, I'm using a version of a pocket screw joint called the butt joint, where one part just ends right at another part. Now for these, I used relatively narrow pieces for the spacers. And in the 720, along with the 520, there are some guide marks on the drilling block so that you can center the workpiece over two of the holes so that when you drill them, you have the two pocket holes drilled, centered, and in a great location on there. To install these, I started on the bottom side with the table flipped upside down. And I want it so that the top of the spacer is flush with the opening for the drawer. So I installed those, then flipped the table upright, and now I can do the same thing for installing the upper spacers, making sure again that the lower surface now is flush with the opening. Now butt joints aren't used just for parts like this. You can also bring them together in standalone assemblies that you would use for like a face frame. Pocket hole joinery can be used for such a wide variety of applications when you're building projects. So for example, on our table project, we've already shown how to make edge joints, panel joints, uh, 90 degree and offset joints. And another one that we're gonna look at is creating boxes or cases using pocket screw joinery. Now I'm gonna demonstrate it making the two drawers that I need for this table. So what I have here are the pieces for a drawer side. One of the big things that you wanna think about is where to locate the pocket screws for their maximum strength. So I have the sides, a drawer front, and a drawer back. What I'm gonna do is with the drawer pieces laid out here, I'm gonna locate the screws so that they run from the drawer front into the drawer sides, drilling a pair of holes on each end of the front. That way the stress of opening and closing the drawers will be resisted by the direction of the screws going from the front into the sides. Now I'll do the same thing on the back, but this time I'm gonna locate the screw holes on the back side of the back. That way they'll be concealed, and unless you pull the drawer completely out, you're never gonna notice. Up at the front, I'm gonna add a thin false front that will cover everything up, dress up the look of the drawer, and conceal the pocket screws all at the same time. Not only can you use pocket hole joinery to assemble projects, but you can also use it to solve problems in your workshop. Here's one that I'm faced with, is I'm making a small mirror frame with miter joints. Now, if you've ever used miter joints in the past, you know what's about to happen here. You put glue on the joint faces and go to apply clamps, and those angled faces start sliding around. The solution, as you can imagine, is to use pocket holes. So I've drilled a pocket hole on the back side of the workpiece here so that when I go to assemble it, it will draw the joint tightly together. Now the key here is locating where those pocket holes are gonna be because you don't want the hole to be visible from the outside edge. So it just takes a little bit of alignment in your jig when you go to drill those holes to make sure that they're not gonna be visible. The other thing that you wanna do is when you go to assemble it is to create a right angle corner somewhere on a workbench that you can brace those two pieces together and then drive the screws in knowing that they're gonna stay in their proper orientation. 
The result is a strong and great looking mitered frame that you can use and put to work almost immediately. Your pocket hole jig can do a lot more than just build tables and mirrors though. In fact, I've used mine to build a whole kitchen full of cabinets. And I'm working on another set here for some storage out in the garage. Now when I'm working with pocket holes on case construction, like the plywood panels for this cabinet, I'm trying to balance both the strength and the looks and speed and assembly as well. So for this, I'm using pocket holes to attach the bottom to the two case sides. I'm drilling the pocket holes in pairs on the bottom face of that piece. That way when everything's assembled, you don't see where the screws are and they're not gonna get in the way of the items that you store. Up at the top of the case, I have two narrow stretchers that I'm gonna to use to attach the countertop later on. Those get pocket holes, this time on the upper face, for the exact same reason. That way they're gonna be out of sight in the finished project. Assembling things is really easy. I used some assembly squares to keep the parts in their proper alignment while I drove the screws in place. And the result here is a strong, great looking case that came together in just a few minutes. So if you're ready to tackle a cabinet job in your house, it's time to grab your pocket hole jig. We've looked at how you can use a pocket hole jig to create flat edge joints, like for a tabletop. But you can also create an offset edge joint, and that's what I'm doing here. I have a plywood shelf that I want to conceal the edges of the plywood and add some strength. So what I have is a wider piece of hardwood that I want to attach. So what I've done is used my 720 to drill the pocket holes on the bottom side of the shelf. I've just lined it up and drilled them in pairs. It's an efficient way to get a high number of screws and a stronger joint into the panel. Then I can line up my edging, bring it up tight, and then start driving in the screws. What I have here is a strong shelf ready for some paint and ready to go in the next step of my project. I rely on pocket hole joinery from everything from furniture projects to do-it-yourself home improvement projects. And I hope you've learned some lessons along the way, whether you intend to build something like these two projects that I've been focusing on or have piqued your curiosity and interest in building something that's uniquely yours. Now, if you want to find more information about using your pocket hole jig, you can always check out craigtool.com for more ideas and project tips and techniques. Thanks for watching.